Hello, and welcome once again to the video. This one is my final one, looking at each Grand Prix in the 2023 Formula One season. I've looked at 21 previous races, and now it's the turn of the final one, round number 22. Officially round number 23, but of course we never had Imola because of the disasters there with their flooding. So this is round 22. And of course, Abu Dhabi. My pen is on the way out still. I say that every time I do one of these videos. Um, but I do have a replacement, uh, if necessary, on standby. There you see. Ready to jump in if necessary. Okay, so the usual routine. I list down the uh, finishing order. And then I do the top 10 in the championship, driver's championship. I might do... Uh, the full rundown of the Drivers' Championship this time. Uh, and then I do a uh, top 10 in the uh, Constructors' Championship. Or I might just do the top 10 in the Drivers. I'm just sort of thinking about this on the spot. So then I can do a separate video looking at the whole season, maybe. Not that there's, not that there's much to really report on uh, with the whole season, but... Um, I'll do. A, uh, I'll probably do a little short video, looking at a very one-sided, a well-deserved one-sided, but a very one-sided uh, season. Right. So let's start. Just have a little dab on the focus. I always get a little wobble when I do that. Okay. Eighth. Sunoda. Ninth. Hamilton. Tenth. Magnuson. Okay. So the championship. Come on, hold on, pen. Hold on. Five, seven, five. Two zero. 
So, let's have a look at that focus again. Easy does it. Let's have a look at the constructors. Okay, a little break there. I suddenly realised that I hadn't actually, on my little notes here, I hadn't actually written down all the points for the constructors. <laughs> um, I didn't want to guess. 860 uh, Mercedes 409 Ferrari 406 McLaren 302 Okay, so we got there in the end. Well done, Pin. No need for the replacement quite yet. So, what did we think of that final race of the season? Um, I just put down the fastest lap. Which was Verstappen. I have to say that I thought it was a bit of an uninteresting race. I mean, I, being a Formula One fan, as I'm sure all Formula One fans out there appreciate, you you like every race. Basically, you just like some more than others. Um, when I was a kid, I used to just love just literally watching the cars, and uh, there was a lot less coverage on the TV uh, when I was a kid. A lot less. And so you soaked up every single little bit you could get, even if it was just an interview, I would tape it off the TV. Even if it wasn't showing any cars driving around. I remember taping a, an interview of Ayrton Senna off the TV in 1990. Just a 10 minute interview. Um, talking about his notorious uh, you know, Japanese collision with Prost. And uh, I soaked it up, loved it. Um, now there's so much coverage that it's not quite so exciting seeing the cars on TV. But nevertheless, I still enjoy every race for what it has. But some are definitely more interesting than others. And this was a, a less interesting one. Um, Max Verstappen, of course, started on pole position. There were lots of... Um, attempted overtaking manoeuvres in the first sort of stint. Um, but for some reason, even with DRS, um, very few of those overtaking manoeuvres were actually able to happen. 
um, a lot of drivers were pulling alongside drivers, but just not able to get past, strangely. Um, the, the most notable one being Leclerc, trying to get past Verstappen. Um, Verstappen often has these slow starts, and that's the time to get past him. Uh, drivers have often challenged him. Norris did at the British Grand Prix. Was it this year or last year? This year, I think. Um, and it's those opening couple of laps are the time to get Verstappen before he settles in. But Leclerc didn't manage it uh, in this particular race. Once we did have lots of overtaking, the overtaking was uh, mostly due to um, drivers being on different strategies, I felt. Um, not so much because um, they were fighting genuinely for a position. So yes, there were plenty of overtaking manoeuvres later, but they all seemed a bit sort of flat and a bit obvious because one was on fresher tyres um, and not really racing the other one. So a little bit flat and uninteresting, Verstappen just increasing his lead by a little bit every lap, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, every single lap, just like Hamilton used to do. Um, for his 19th win of the season, incredible that, isn't it? Unbelievable. 19 out of 22. And 1,000 plus laps led in 2023, which is the first time that, that uh, a driver has led over 1,000 laps in a Grand Prix. Uh, incredible. Fantastic performance, it has to be said. Um, however, that thing has happened, which... Uh, on behalf of Red Bull, I was dreading, and that is they've only won 21 out of 22 races, just like McLaren won 15 out of 16 in 1988. Um, now, I haven't watched, I haven't had a chance to watch uh, the uh, chit chat after the race on TV. I normally always do, but I haven't had a chance to, so they may well have referred to that. Undoubtedly, they referred to them winning 21 of the races, but has it actually been covered how horrific that is to have won 21? I would, I think I would rather have won 20 out of 22 than 21 out of 22. That's painful, missing by just one. But uh, yeah, an amazing effort nonetheless. So the race, it's difficult to, well, I could stand out, of course, Sunola, what a fantastic performance. Ever since he was given the nod over, I think, Liam Lawson, wasn't it? Liam Lawson was covering for Ricardo, I think. Ever since, um, I thought Sunoda was going to get the chop. I think a lot of people did in favour of Lawson. But the team went with Sunoda for next year. Ever since then, he's he's been really good. He's chalked up um, a few sort of seventh places and a few sixth, seventh, eighths, uh, three or four of those. And uh, it was really, he was really good here. Was he fourth on the grid or something, wasn't he? Something crazy like that, or sixth, maybe. Um, unbelievable. He held his own, eight, finishing eighth place. Very good performance. It wasn't quite enough to uh, for Alpha Tauri to catch Williams. Because where was Ricardo? He was nowhere. Um, so, um, yeah, Alpha Tauri didn't uh, manage to catch Williams, but... Still, fantastic performance by Sunoda. That's a standout performance, I think. There were a few other things that happened, noteworthy things. Alonso uh, slamming on the brakes uh, when Hamilton was behind him. That's, isn't that a little bit dangerous? Hamilton said, oh, Alonso just brake tested me. Now, you know, I tend to take that sort of stuff with a pinch of salt when I hear a driver say that. But when they did the replay, it was obvious that he did. And I think it was investigated, but no, he didn't get a Alonso didn't get a penalty, did he? Don't think so. But he clearly slows. Whether or not he hit the brakes is another thing entirely. But he um, he definitely slowed when he shouldn't have slowed. And of course that then makes Hamilton slow. And then Alonso can speed up then and accelerate. And uh, he's got the jump on Hamilton behind him. Because Hamilton had to react to him slowing. So very cheeky. And I'm surprised that there wasn't a uh, a penalty but I suppose it's difficult to prove that it's intentional. Um, could his foot have just slipped off the accelerator, you know? Uh, 
slipped off the gas. Don't know. Someone who did get a penalty, of course, was Perez. A very good charge through the field, but I mean, he shouldn't, he sh in that Red Bull, he shouldn't be having to charge through the field every race, should he? He should be qualifying right near the top. Um, they keep patting him on the back for managing to come through from 19th to 3rd every race, but uh, uh, that's not good enough, is it? He shouldn't be qualifying so far down the field all the time. But he had um, that ding-dong with Norris, which he got a penalty for, and then he was unhappy, and he said some things about the stewards, uh, which which was taken uh, as a personal slur against the stewards, so he then got into trouble for that, so he had to apologise profusely. Um, I, I don't sympathise with what Perez said, necessarily, but whether he should have got a penalty... Um, when overtaking Norris. He went up the inside of Norris, didn't he? Um, yes, he did go wide, but Norris, it could be argued, came in a little bit as well. Norris could have gone a little bit wider too. It's a tight, it's a tight corner, like most of them are. Um, so I think Norris should have known uh, that he was there. It's a little bit like Hamilton Verstappen at Silverstone in 2021. Hamilton was slightly wider than normal, going through that corner, but also Verstappen just came in and just collected him, just drove into him. Um, he wouldn't have hit Hamilton had Hamilton not gone slightly wide. But uh, just the same as here, it could have easily been avoided if Norris had gone wider through that corner and there was loads of room uh, instead of coming in a little bit on Perez. So Perez went wide a little bit, Norris came in a little bit. So I would be inclined to not give a penalty to, to either driver there. So I think that's a bit rough. So Perez, I think, does have a point. Um, the Mercedes pit crew might be in a bit of trouble because they had their visors down, apparently. Uh, I think a number of teams uh, had the same thing. Their visors were down because it's like, like, I don't know, 65 degrees or something. 65 degrees Celsius, you know, so 130 Fahrenheit or something. So they had their visors up when they shouldn't have done. And um, some of the teams are going to get into trouble for that. I'm struggling to find things noteworthy in the race, I have to say. Um, uh, oh yeah, that thing at the end was very strange, wasn't it? I don't, I'm not sure I've seen that before. A driver from one team, Leclerc, letting a driver from another team, Perez, letting him overtake him so that Perez could hopefully build up a five-second cushion to Russell so that Perez does not fall behind Russell, therefore giving more points to Mercedes so that they would beat Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship. <laughs> that was so complicated at the end of the race there. Great bit of thinking by Leclerc, because I think it was Leclerc that came up with the idea of letting Perez pass, because obviously Leclerc didn't want Russell to finish third. In the end, I think fourth would have would have been enough, wouldn't it? Um, uh, it's a three-pointer, right? So you get 15 for third, 12 for fourth. Yeah, so if Russell had finished fourth, they would have been level on points. And then um, it would have been come down to how many wins. And of course, Ferrari had one win. So, yeah, that so nearly happened. In the end, Perez was only 3.8 seconds ahead of Russell. So Mercedes secured second place in the Constructors' Championship by 1.2 seconds, you can say there. But, uh, yeah, great idea by Leclerc, and that would have been fantastic had that worked. Uh, I, I, didn't certainly, I certainly didn't see that coming. I wouldn't have thought of that as a possibility. But Leclerc letting Perez through. Um, to try and increase the gap between Perez and Russell. Leclerc knowing that Perez probably wouldn't pull out five seconds on him, but at least maybe he would get five seconds on Russell. That's preventing Russell from taking third place. It's a good bit of thinking, very clever bit of thinking. I've not seen that specific bit of strategy before. Um, it didn't pay off, but it nearly did by 1.2 seconds. Um, what else? I just want to go on about Tsunoda, how, how great he was in both qualifying and the race. Um, uh, oh yeah, Gasly was a bit annoyed, wasn't he? That he, he was kept out longer than Ocon. 
I don't know why that was. Two laps longer than Ocon, which meant Ocon got the undercut. Gasly was comfortably ahead of Ocon and then never got past him. So I don't know what that was about. Albon still refu refusing to finish either 7th or 11th since I started calling him 7-11, um, which is a bit out of order. Science, yeah, he was, uh, what was the problem with Science again? He's always, in every race these days, he seems to have an issue. Uh, he stopped very early on. He started on, yeah, he had a messed up qualifying, didn't he? So he started on hards. Did he start on hards? Everyone else started on mediums. Uh, but also Science came in very early for a pit stop as well. Tried to do a one stopper. Didn't work, of course. So um, he had to come in again. That's just a bit of a disaster, really. Uh, same with the Alfa Romeos, same with the Hasses. And I think Ricardo, he's, uh, there's been one race where he impressed. Where was that? Was that Mexico, where he was fifth, I think? Apart from that, um, I don't think he's impressed at all. And that's how the championship finished. I mean, I, I will do a video looking at maybe the whole season but that's incredible how close those three were well actually and that one as well and him as well um a book ended by hamilton and russell there's four drivers alonso leclerc norris and Sainz. six points separating four drivers book ended by the mercedes now i remember from my last video you, you can't call that a mercedes sandwich Okay, there's a lot of stuff in that sandwich. It's a big mega whopper sandwich, but uh, you can't call it a Mercedes sandwich because that means a, a real sandwich would have to be called a bread sandwich. So really, this is a Alonso Leclerc Norris Sainz sandwich, uh, basically. So over Alpine, they had a very lonely race, didn't they, Alpine? Uh, not lonely race, uh, lonely championship. All on their own, sixth place pretty much all the way through. Look at that, 160 points behind Aston Martin, 92 points ahead of Williams. They've just been in sixth place. Uh, I think they started off very slow, actually, in the, in, in the season, didn't they, Alpine? Um, on the first few races, they were quite, they were sort of nowhere, I think. Um, but then they uh, picked up very fast. Or, or am I thinking of last year, when they were nowhere in the first few races? Anyway. A very lonely championship for them in the end. But I will look at the... Um, I'll just do a short video looking at the whole uh, season, basically. Uh, in a week's time, probably. So, there you go. Not a very exciting race. Um, no real highlights. I just liked that tactical thing by Leclerc at the end. I thought that was very clever and very good. And nearly, nearly got second place for Ferrari in the championship. It's incredible, isn't it, that um, a Ferrari lets, by letting past a Red Bull, he nearly secured um, second place for Ferrari, even though he was letting someone pass him. But there you go. So he, I liked that. And I liked it, Sonoda. Great performance by Sonoda. Right, so I think that's the end of that video, but I will do a, uh, a season recap, as I said. I'm pretty sure I'll do that. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to comment or leave a like, then uh, do that also. Thank you. Um, and I'll see you on the next video, whatever it may be about. It might be this season recap. It might not. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.